All right, movement is heavily limited on election day for obvious reasons, and the only vehicles permitted to ply public routes uh, are security vehicles, observers, and those with special status to transport sensitive and non-sensitive election material. Now, with the presidential elections fast approaching on the 25th of February, the announcement by Olusha Gwabwaje, the INEC resident electoral commissioner in Lagos State, on the proposed partnership for the distribution of election materials has raised a lot of concern and speculations on the credibility of the execution of the forthcoming elections. So what are your thoughts on this? Um, let's hear what you have to say. Remember, you can join the conversation, send us an SMS, or WhatsApp to the one a 3 You can also tweet us at Wayshow Africa one with the hashtag Wayshow. All right, so this conversation is quite interesting because I heard the story, I think, about two days ago or so, or was it yesterday? I'm not sure now. And it seemed like, what's going on, right? Um, but um, backtrack again to previous elections. It's actually not a new thing yeah. because most times the INEC mm -hmm. body, they mm -hmm. don't have the wherewithal to distribute this election materials. I mean, from the reports that, I mean, there was a report for the 2019, 2019 general elections yeah. that was shared. Yeah. Um, the, the, the general report after the elections, mm -hmm. you know, part of the, the main constraint was um, logistics, logistics, you know, moving election materials from one polling unit and not to, to the other. And they had signed an MOU with NURTW yeah. and I think um, NATO, uh, NATO, right? Yeah. So again, uh, remember that NURTW had an issue with um, MC Oluwamo and they then suspended him. Eventually something, something happened. Somebody was not going to apologize or whatever it was that happened. I really don't want to know. And uh, um, he then left the mm -hmm. NURTW and Lagos right. State, of course, government empowered him and you know, created Lagos State Parks and Garden Management, management uh, which is now, he is now the chairman, yeah. right? So literally saying that, you know what, you can tell them to go, you know, go, <laughs> <laughs> go hog transformer. You are going to be in charge of your state. You're going to be in charge of Lagos State. So that, that alone, that move alone gave me a bit of concern because again, somebody has to be accountable. The reason why we have a lot of funny kind of leadership in Nigeria is because there's no form of accountability. Mm -hmm. You feel like you don't owe anybody an explanation. explanation yeah. So for me, I feel like, okay, NURTW was trying to do something right. in a way to discipline or to curtail his excesses. Because again, they say power intoxicates, absolute power, you know. It is complete, it's, 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 it just grips you absolutely, right? You just, you know, want to explode and all of that. And that's the thing about power, right? It can, it can really suck you in mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. you really feel like you are above, you can look, you're untouched. So that's what I think would have played out, you know. And now Lagos State government empowered him with the Lagos State Parks and Gardens. So I'm just wondering. Right. What are your thoughts? First of all, when you heard about this partnership or this proposed partnership, because it has not happened yet, mm. the MOU that was that is in place is the one that was signed with NURTW. Yeah. Yeah. Right. We don't know the, the the status of NURTW right now in Lagos. I hear that you know it's not it's not it's been suspended by the Lagos State yes, yes. by the Lagos State government. So mm -hmm. it means that if at all any form of movement is going to happen, it has it's to happen not with not uh, what's it called the. Parks and, Parks and management. So let me hear your thoughts. Okay, so I have a lot of things to say about this. So first, when I saw the reports on 2019 elections, you see, we have a problem in Nigeria, and that problem is lack of planning. So we knew from the beginning that... We don't have the capacity. Exactly. You know you, want, you, you have to move 5,000 whatever, 10,000 whatever, 15,000 whatever. How about you make these plans before time? We have how many years? Four years. So, you know, make up, put all those preparations in place. Why didn't we do that? Why is it now at the nick of, of time we're then saying, oh, we want to bring in this, we want to bring in that. I like that you also touched on <laughs> how MC, Luma, MC Oluomo was suspended from NURSW and then now they gave him this legal state parks, management, whatever. Bear in mind that this same person is also the APC chief. chief team. Team. Bear in mind that he has also held solidarity rallies for APC. Maybe if he wasn't inclined to a particular party, which mm -hmm. is what Abu Bakr said. This guy is actually inclined to the APC. So how can you come and tell me that someone who is the chairman of this is the person that's not going to be in charge of moving these materials? Of course, I'm going to panic. I'm going to start asking myself, 
oh, is this not giving APC undue advantage? It doesn't this seem like, okay, this election is going to be, there's going to be some mago mago, as we mm -hmm. say. It, I don't think that it's, I understand that, yes, logistics is very important, but if there was proper planning put in place, we'll probably not find ourselves here, which is already the first problem. More so, I get now that you're saying, okay, let's leave it. According to what, um, uh, what's his name, Mr. Agbaje said, that, yeah, it's quite um, imperative that they are able to move the election materials and whatnot, whatnot, whatnot. How about you look for a neutral body to actually do that? You say you cannot bring in cars or you cannot bring in vehicles from other states, that it's unlawful to do that. Didn't you know this before? Why are you just talking about this now? So, it's just, I don't know. You know, it's so interesting that I was just saying to someone that most churches that do all these uh, conventions mm -hmm. and all of that, they move pe people in their thousands to their to their destination, and guess what? Most of these things they contract it. Yeah, you just get hired. Yeah. You know, because again, from the report, they said the ideal thing is that normally you are not even supposed to know who they are no, partnering. No, exactly, who is the supposed partner that they are partnering to move the sensitive materials. So I know someone that is in charge of election materials. Mm. Right now, eh? DSS, SSS, everything. You can't even go close to the office. Of course. Because those are the people that... So it is that sensitive. Mm -hmm. Do you understand what I'm saying? Yeah. So how would you now... The, the, the thing when we say they don't use DSS and everything, <laughs> SSS, they protect. <laughs> you don't go... You know, hand it over to some... So that, like you rightly said, if he was a passitan, yeah. yes, he was, if he was neutral, right, he was not affiliated to any yeah. Polit yeah. political party, Nobody will say anything. Of course. But let me hear your thoughts, um, Jennifer. Then I'll come to you, Mary. I honestly believe that with the way Nigeria is and a lot of these bodies operate, they know that they can do things and they will get away with it. Nigerians won't probably ask a lot of questions. I mean, people would have doubts in their mind. They'll have questions. They'll probably talk about it in their small, small groups. But then they are not questioned. And because they are not exactly held to give us answers they just come out and then make these decisions and let us know okay this is what we're running with this is what we're doing we know the history of mc Olomo. like we know where he started from i mean i'm i'm not um i wouldn't say i'm 100 percent big on council culture that kind of thing i know that you can always give people opportunities and all of that but then we know where he's coming from we know his foundation we know what he's rooted in and it actually scares me so much because on election day we don't know what will happen and i have this very terrible feeling that a lot of things will happen it's either papers are missing or some of these um, materials will not get to its polling units or you have violence happening in those um, sections or where people are going to vote violence comes out or people are attacked or something like I, I really do not get it they, they came out and said oh they don't have vehicles and like you said there are churches who actually contract these things out if you want to get it done the right way you will get it done i feel like all these things are just it's excuses a company. I don't know. they're we're, just we're, excuses we're, we're, we're supposed to bring her on the show the ceo of i think shuttlers or something Shuttlers. Oh. do you understand she does not own any of all those buses but most of the buses right now they are helping, um, um, what's it called, uh, workers, nine to fivers, get to their, get their, to their jobs, right? Yeah. From different parts of, for, of of Lagos. So I mean, it's a company. She has yeah. she has created a That's system. True, yeah. If you want to show that you're, because again, this is really worrisome for me, because you knew from twenty, you knew, oh, and you said, oh, you are going to get better for with the next <sighs> election. But you, there's no even, there's no even, because again, don't forget that previous elections, there's always complaints. Mm -hmm. People infest that. Yes. There's always complaints about uh, that. Uh, either it doesn't get them. Or it them doesn't late. get them to get to them at all. Mm -hmm. Or it gets there extremely oh, late. Yeah. Time, yeah. That has always been their concern. They've always been their complaint. But let me hear your thought, Mary, then. We'll take a break because I'd like to hear the thoughts of Nigerians. Um, to be honest, I actually didn't look at it from Yufu's point of view. I was just thinking, oh, yeah, he's closer to the masses and he, you know, knows his people well, so he'll be able to, you know, sensitize it. But now that you have said that, thinking about it, I mean, it's just giving APC undue advantage because there's no way I'm going to be for APC and I'm not going to... It's either you're going to put people under pressure to say, oh, yeah, 
votes for APC or something or misplaced ballot papers. And I'm just wondering why is it that we don't think in this country before we do things? I mean, we're just four ladies here, and I believe we think at least to a certain extent before we pass on judgment. Everything is just scattered. I mean, if I'm sorry to say, but if the election can just come and go and let's who wants to win, <laughs> let's win. I think I'm tired at this point because it's not making any sense. It's actually not making any sense. It's really not making any sense. You are clearly setting APC up for success. Hmm. And I guess the game is the game. So we just have to play. It is what it is. It is but let me play the devil's advocate though. <laughs> so there's this, there's this, uh, there's this, uh, what's it called, slogan that says, keep your friends close and your enemies closer. closer. Because again, somebody has said, <laughs> has argued that, really, who are the people that go out on the streets to go and disrupt elections? They are the thugs, them are they? right? So if you tell them that, come, I know that you're the one that will disrupt the election <laughs> and I hand over these things to you. Do you understand? We did deliberately now because now it's obvious. That you are the one holding on to mm. the, you know, to the well, elections. Have you met you these think? people mm. in this Nigeria, <laughs> in this Lagos? Not in Nigeria, in this Lagos. <laughs> they don't care. They will do because they know that. Look, we can mess this thing up, and there's nothing you would do about it. Mm. So saying that, okay, we know that you are the ones that always cause these records, but then come and be in charge. Of, that's like even now giving giving them more power to carry out what it is that they want no, to carry don't, out. No, but don't you think in a way it disarms them to no, do it? No, it not them. We just talked, ab just talked about accountability. I mean, he can come out and say, oh, my people don't listen to me anymore. He can come up with any excuse. Because I hear that, I hear that now. In the, in the, all of all of those things, uh -huh. they actually put tracking devices, right? Hmm. They put tracking devices to monitor the movement and the whereabouts of every single a vehicle that the the elect this election materials would be, be transported. transported in. Who is the organization that the is first in it? Who is the person? Who is the Miss Way? So we have a conversation. No. Was no. this not at the same our uh, toll gate where somebody held handkerchief and found camera that was not there before? All right, if you just tuned in, it's our ladies' night out, and we're discussing the proposed INEC MCO Lua Moss partnership, right? It's actually Lagos State Parks and Garden, but you know, he's the chairman. <laughs> so we're asking, is it a good or a bad idea? Now, please let's hear what you have to say. Remember, you can join this conversation, send us an SMS or WhatsApp to 081 803 You can also tweet at us at Wayshow Africa one with a hashtag we show now our phone line is now open and the number to call is zero seven zero two five zero zero seven seven four nine that's the number to call okay so i mean this is actually very interesting because this is not just affecting the presidential election lagos state is an apc state exactly. so i don't know i don't understand how you give me something that i am a part of right and i will not sway and that's why for instance in the hospitals right you you're not allowed to operate on your on family your, member yeah, yeah. because there is there's no way that um, that bias will not be Come there on, that's you know that sensitivity will not be there yeah. right emotions will play out you cannot be in the family and watch your family members lose of course. right yeah. so that's why you see parents go out of their way sometimes to go and bribe uh, what's it called for WAEC and all of those things so that their children will pay. yes we've seen parents pay for results and all of that thing it's not because they set out to say they want to pay but uh -huh. sometimes you cannot just watch your children fail uh -huh. so in this case Lagos State let's even leave presidency right because presidency is a bit of you know Lagos State is an APC state right and I, I would not see an F APC ch chieftain not giving not being given the mandate to deliver Lagos State to APC. <laughs> but let me take our first caller for the evening, Kingsley for Port, from Port Harcourt. Did I call the number to call? Oh sorry. <laughs> Kingsley, you're live. Hello? Hello? Go ahead, you're live. Okay, okay. Good evening, ladies. Good evening. Good evening, ladies. Good evening. Can you hear me? Yes, yes we can. can. Okay, good evening. First and foremost, let me appreciate. Let me appreciate you, baby. You're doing quite a good job. You're doing quite a good 
job there. Thank you. You are talking about the election, right? And the subject. Okay, so. Okay. Okay, okay. First and foremost, first and foremost, are you people aware that there is a recent Supreme Court judgment where a particular political party is celebrating about it? You would have to would have to cut you off. Call back, please. And please, when you call back, turn off the device that you are listening in with because there's a feedback and it affects the conversation. The number to call, sorry, is 0702500 That's the number to call. And remember, just turn off the volume of whatever device you're you're listening or watching us from, right? So there's no feedback. You can hear us and we can hear you clearly. Well, sorry, we had to cut off that call. Um, I, I wish I could hear what he was trying to say. say yeah. You know, so I mean, yeah, you get to, I'm just saying that every, for instance, every local government chairman right now, <laughs> every local government chairman across Nigeria that belongs to a political party has been given a mandate to deliver yeah. their local government to their, yeah, to their, to their uh, what's it called, the, the national body. Mm -hmm. So if they belong to APC, it is APC. If they belong to SDP, it is SDP. If they belong to, uh, what's it called, Labour Party, mm. they have to deliver. So everybody has that mandate. So again, somebody that has been handed that mandate to deliver, you know, to his constituency, <laughs> how do you expect? <laughs> but let me take Kule from Lagos. Hello, Kunle, you're live. Okay, good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Yeah, um, just to quickly contribute to your discourse. Um, for me, I, I, I think that I think that it was um, the decision to, to engage the services of uh, um, commercial transporters in Lagos is, is wrong. It's, it's totally wrong and disgusting. Uh, but I, I'm confused a bit because I wouldn't know, you, you know, um, in case um, NRTW, the, the front NRTW in Lagos State, you know, has metamorphosed into Lagos uh, Park and Garages um, Management Committee, headed by MC Oluomo. And there is another, another organization called... Um, Lagos Park Management, management, which is headed by the present uh, monarch of Ibar Town. So you have you have two two um, transport organizations in Lagos State. One uh, which actually uh, was, was used to be known as NRTW, and the other one known as the uh, Road Transport Employers Employer Association of Nigeria. So which one which one is INEC engaging? Is it the one led by Oluomo only, or is INEC also engaging the services of uh, Right Sand, which has become a um, tax management uh, committee, mm. on another hand? So, but for me, it just goes to show that um, there is operational deficiency in INEC, perhaps because INEC is not being funded the way it should be funded. Otherwise, there is no basis for engaging um, people who, who, who are strenuous to, to his operation, operation. I don't know the kind of role that uh, uh, Eudo do will play in this regard. Even if you're saying, I've already saying that, you know, the vehicles will be tracked. We all know, we all know um, what the what, what they is Absolutely. and the kind of elements, you know, that I can engage. Well, okay, so there's a... Thank you, Kunle. But you know there's a dynamic thing that is happening with these particular elections, uh. right? Don't forget that transmission of results uh. is going to be done electronically based on the new electoral act. Mm. So if at all there is going to be some form of manipulation, look at what happened in Oshun State, right? Where there was overvoting and now a, a presidential candidate, um, a, gov a governor, um, what's it called? Somebody that was declared winner now mm. has been, it has been upturned, mm. right? Based on the evidence of probably overvoting over or whatever mm. it is. Mm. So mm. if we know that these things are in place, should we be worried? You know, because for us now, is it not a no-brainer that mm. the elections, whether they like or, you know, since now there's a more structured way to transmit results, because which was what... 
the Mona Lemme Land TV oh, show. Okay, no. <laughs> <laughs> which was what which was what was prevalent in previous elections where some printing would happen overnight. You understand? And the next day somebody is declared a winner. The month you understand? after that's when you you know so I'm saying to you that with the new structure of the electoral act that allows for tra electronic transmission of results. So whether they even give it to the devil himself to to what's it called to to transport your sensitive materials and all of that will it really affect the outcome of the elections? Do you think that this thing that they did in Oshun State can they play that kind of game for the presidential election where you sworn someone in? Then that's when you are waking up to say that oh no there was over voting or something. Does that not show that you yourself, you don't even know what you are doing? Mm. How are you realizing months after, you know, that... Oh, yeah, because was... the case is, the case, you know, our Nigerian case is always in court. <laughs> Jinelo, you are smiling. <laughs> well, we should be very worried. Ha! <laughs> huh. We should be very worried. Because to be honest, I don't think that this Beavers system is really going to make a difference, if mm -hmm. I'm being honest. I, I don't think so. And this is very sad, because I was... I thought oh, yes. very honestly that this year I could have actually okay, let me not use that word. I think would have gotten their acts right. You had an entire four years. Come on, election doesn't happen every other day. <laughs> it happens four years. And then you come back and when I hear these kind of things, I then ask myself questions like when these people sit down, do they actually have a structure? What do they discuss? what do they put in place what kind of plans do they come up with how do they operate what do they think of it was their thought process <sighs> like because i don't believe that even personally what well, in your home you are running your home you know that okay when you make beans your kids don't like to eat beans right you think about it you're like okay but they need to eat beans how else can i make these beans for them let's be better you actually go through a process and you then you try different things Crazy before you finally moe moe. do you understand <laughs> but nigeria <laughs> today we know that these people don't like sweet amala mm. next tomorrow we're still going to save the amala mm. in five days we will still save the amala no matter what it is that happens we still co and i so i now ask myself so how are we expecting a different result when we are when we keep that's the definition of insanity <laughs> the, definition of insanity. the truth is we don't have any structure and then sometimes when they put policies in place you find out that even the people who actually put those policies in place are not following it mm. now if you work in an organization at the beginning of the year you have like a board meeting where you're talking about your plans for the year what are your okrs what are your key objectives how are you going to deliver on those things and quarterly, you have mm -hmm. QBRs, a quarterly business review meetings, mm. where you're reviewing your target for the year. Okay. So when it comes to Nigeria, sometimes... They have not reviewed. They don't know QBR. They don't know QBR. <laughs> we have no more of money. <laughs> Love my, your life. Good evening. Good evening. Yeah. Um, I want to ask you, my sister. Um, what I'm seeing on your screen, is this report? I met stroke. MC Olomo partnership. <laughs> well, that is, is how we, that is how we coined the topic. MC Olomo, is it is he not? So why you want to move boy? Why must I met partner with him? Which means I met want to give this election to somebody. Hey, I know, I know. Please stop what you are about doing. Because when you do it, you are telling actual, you want to have a terrible, that you have already won the election. election. So if you're picking somebody, pick a neutral person. Don't take MC or Roma. MC or Roma is as what you want a terrible boy. Now, coming to my sister, who was talking about that we have gotten a structured uh, behind uh, electoral act. Let me tell you. If we have a structural electoral act, so we talk wouldn't have them into what they did in Machina Stroke Lawante. Because in, in Machina Stroke Lawante, the Supreme Court went into technicality mm. without taking the real issues. Mm. So now they decided to destroy the electoral act by not following the electoral act. 
we have decided to go into the university. So I don't know what 2023 election will look like when it gets to Supreme Court because if Supreme Court can start now, what to recognize the electoral act? I don't know what Nigeria will do. Thank you very much. Okay. God well, bless you. Well, ask a question. Yes, please. Sorry, Jennifer. Who are people that are going to drive these buses and driving? <laughs> <laughs> so, so wait. So let me explain how I think. I think I think INEC is not thinking through these things, uh, <laughs> and I think we need to help them. Huh. Right? Need to help them? Yeah, we need to help them. I mean, my kids go to school in Ocean State, for instance. Whenever they are coming back from school, we we usually drop them off in school. But whenever they are coming back, they come with the school bus and. I mean, it's a committee. Parents come together. Okay. There's a chaperone in each of the buses, of you know, and all of that. So yeah. parents actually volunteer mm. to have chaperones in each of the buses. I don't know how the structure would run, but I should believe that they should be representatives of each of the um, parties. parties. And that already, sh because yes, that's the only way you can monitor whatever that is going on. So from the point of pickup, everybody's representative will be there to be picked up and from and the point of exit, the representative will be there till it is also submitted. Mm. If that is the case, then they will not have an issue. But already we have not even got into the elections. We're seeing so many violent things happening. And we know that these people are directly associated with violence. When the NSAS protest happened in, in October of 2020, you remember that it was in BRT buses, some of these thugs, just right around the governor's office in Alausa, yeah. right? These thugs were there with machete, they were with cutlasses mm -hmm. and all of those things. Mm -hmm. And nobody could even put a rein on them. Yeah. So, I mean, it, 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 it begs the question that, really, is INEC, you know, part of the propaganda? To, and this is not even because it's APC. If it would have been any, any other party, party. Yes. as far as I'm concerned, everybody that knows me, I believe in free and fair. Okay. Give everybody a plain level field to play. Whoever then emerges, then you say, okay, kudos, and you shake like good well. sportsmen, and you're done. So not give giving someone an advantage, because now this thing affects a lot of things. The governorship elections is at stake. State have House of Assembly, mm -hmm. Federal House of Assembly, you know, uh, or, or federal, uh, the Federal Assembly mm -hmm. and, you know, the presidency. Every, everything in that value chain is at stake because you cannot have, you know, someone that is passive, passive, and it's not like he is even hidden. He is clear. Very clear. You know? Don't be surprised that the boss is Let me take, let me take another call. Um, <laughs> your life, I think someone from Bielsa. Yeah, how are you? Go ahead, please. Like. The program is quite interesting. Thank you. And the topic is very good. But the point I want to make is that uh, INEC as an investor of uh, the current INEC that is currently constituted has done a lot of remarkable improvements in our electoral system. Mm -hmm. Working closely with the new electoral act, you can see that there are a lot of innovations. Election is not an event. Election is a process. And um, INEC have been able to, in this magnitude, meet up, up to 90% of the processes. In the next 14 days or thereabouts, we are going to move into the elections. And if you look at the preparedness, what I think the media should be in the forefront to put the candidates on the right track, it's not the duty of INEC. So because let me ask you a question. Because we should a couple of debates. Because most of the candidates are zero. They are not attacking themselves. They are not discussing the critical issues mm. that are affecting this country. So let me ask you a question. Nigeria is 133 million persons people in the poverty net. And it's a multi-dimensional sector in areas of housing, in areas of education, health, and country affairs. It is just recently we arrived that they want to close the investment. The investment should be closed before now so that the students can get prepared for the election. Because the electoral demography has about 60% of the voters as young persons. Yes, majority of them are still in schools. When we are collecting our PBCs, they are still in schools. So I think there's something fundamental wrong with our system. 
the media is the mirror of the electorate. They should hold politicians accountable. They should hold politicians also accountable. They should hold the system accountable. They should question, interrogate, and investigate our system. Because INEC as it is today, they've done their best. Mm. Because with beavers, you cannot beat it any longer. If you steal a beaver machine, the machine can be deactivated. It's all like ballot box where you can smash and run away. Look at what's happening in our show state today after the announcement of the result. It is INEC that is now suing to ensure that the correct are normally. Before in the past, the candidate is the party that will sue. Because actually, the result was announced by INEC. It is the duty of INEC to defend that result. So, it is the duty of INEC to defend that pronouncement because they issue the, like, the results out. So what I'm going to say in a nutshell is that we should encourage the empire because there are a few weeks to action. We know our systems are not normal. We don't operate a normal system because you can look at what the citizens are passing few days to the election. Thank you. Swift capital all over the country, the Naira swap issue. Then you begin to look at the distractions. They are distracting the whole 230 million persons away from the real issues and taking them to issues that affect their life. Because someone who doesn't have money in his pocket will not think about the election. Someone who doesn't have fuel in his car, how to take his children to school, will not be thinking about the election. So on. Okay, thank you so much, <laughs> Chief Busy. Um, so I get, I get his question or his commendation for INEC. Mm -hmm. I was just going to ask one simple question, right? Is it okay for you to, like, you know, you are in secondary school from GSS 1 up until SS 2? You are straight A's, doing everything and all of that. Then at your SS 3 final year, you now come out with flat, flat out F9. So, the, uh, listen now. So, the, you come out with flat out F9 in your WIAC results, your whatever. So when you look back to all the results that you have got, gotten in the past, mm -hmm. you know, does it not count anymore? No. What was most important? The finish The line. final lap. Yeah. Do you understand? That's why in a relay race, what they do, they put your, their best the legs. Best, yes. In fact, they put the bestest leg mm -hmm. at the last, the last race. Yeah. Because even if the person that started or in the middle, yes, whatever, so if they are too slow, whatever, the person that is the fastest, they put the person at the last leg so he's able to catch up mm -hmm. and probably put up all the energy to get to the finish line and win the relay. So I get you, Chief Easy, right? You must commend INEC, yes, most of the reforms that have happened, like I mentioned earlier, you know, it's actually a, in a way to checkmate politicians and their antecedents, right? Mm -hmm. The only thing I'm worried about is, you know, let INEC you know, be, become a lot more innovative, yeah. right? So you knew that there was transportation problem from day one. You understand? So you, it's not today that that transportation problem yeah. started. Yes. So why didn't you plan? Why, why are we still using the same people and expect a different result? So it doesn't make sense to me. Chinelo, you have a comment and we would okay. pick our final... Yeah. Good evening, my dear beautiful sisters of what are you saying? Hashtag ways. Proposed INEC and MC Olomo's partnership. According to your caller, he made mention of a wrong idea to involve MC Olomo. MC Olomo is an APC man and Bola Ahmed Tinubu's boy. So it is deadly and dangerous, so I'm not in support. It is like a form of campaigning for the success of APC to win the presidential election. I sense serious danger here. I rest my case for now. Sister, well, I like your caftan. And my dear beautiful sister, Mary, you look beautiful and I like your hair. <laughs> my name is Daniel Iudlo. I mean, right let's now. hear our final thought. Thank you so much, Daniel. Let's hear our final thoughts. Yeah, well, so like you said, I think that INEC needs to go back to the drawing board and become more innovative and then also um, employ the use of... There are several other transportation means that they can use without having to go through... Yeah, okay, fine. If they say that they want to put a regulatory body so to speak, in charge of it. But don't now come and tell us that you want to use this particular person in question. You know? So they can actually employ other um, ride hailing services or transportation hailing services to you know, transport this material, since that's where we are at right now, but not this particular And we person. won't have cameras imputed in all the buses as the well, buses you, know? Would, you know. Yeah. Mary, you're going to see I the camera. <laughs> <laughs> the I'm the trying to find the uh, beaver things. Yeah. 
and let's see how it goes. That's what I can say. Maybe we'll plan again for another four years. But um, to say I next should go back to the drawing board, I think it's too late for that. Mm. Yeah. So let's fall through with the plan and let's let's see how it goes. We'll try our best, you know, to be as free and fair as we can. But let's see how it goes. Jenny, yeah, baby. <laughs> In as much as um, the last caller, Chief, said that we need to commend um, INEC. I mean, yes, they've done well so far, but they can do more. Mm. I feel like sometimes when they, when they put out some things, you can actually tell that they did not think it through properly. There was no risk analysis. There was, there was, you didn't even project for the nearest future. I mean, you know the kind of people that we have in Nigeria. So there are lots of things that you need to put in place. And when people see the work that you're doing and they know that you're actually thinking about it very well, people will see the work and they'll say, oh, yes, this person actually did a very good job. I mean, it might not go as great as expected, but you know that, yes, the work that was actually put in place was done properly. And I don't think they've done a proper job, but I mean, I'm just one person. I would just beg um, high neck. The, the tension is really high. high yeah. There's a lot of anticipation in this particular election. I don't know about the other ones, right? So whatever it is that you're doing, be seen to, first of all, know what it is that you're doing, be seen to exhibit some level of competence, and secondly, be seen to be very, very neutral. Um, when MCO Luomo was still under NURTW, he could get away with doing the transporting and all of that. But now that he has clearly remove himself from any mm -hmm. RTW to Lagos State Parks and Garden and all of that. And we know his affiliations, we know where his loyalty lies. It's actually very, very um, tricky yes. to have him control um, sensitive um, materials such as our ballots and whatever it is that we're using for the elections. But hey, INEC, over to you. Thank you so much, ladies. Thank you, Mary, Chinelo, and Jennifer. Now, before we go follow us on all our social media handle, invite your families and friends, Follow all our engagements, interact with us, and like, share, invite families and friends to watch and follow as well. Now, if you missed our quote for the day, here it is again. A lack of transparency results in distrust and a deep, deep sense of insecurity. And that is from Dalai Lama. We'll see you guys tomorrow at 8 p.m. as we bring another great conversation to your screen. Enjoy.